Hello, welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest with an intro that does not include Kiva. Hang on. There we go. Totally legit. In this episode, we show how we installed our lovely feature walls. And the story behind this is that we saw an online ad for some reclaimed barn board that looked really good. But when we went to check it out, it was in pretty rough shape. But the guy there had a small mill operation with a bunch of extra stuff kicking around. And he suggested this, which is a 3 8 thick fur tongue and groove board. And he had a bunch of mixed lengths in packs. And uh, when we added it up though, it was almost exactly the square footage that we needed. So we decided to go for it, even though it wasn't really the look we had originally envisioned, but it's really grown on us. And when we started opening up the packs and seeing the variation of the patterns and colors, uh, we really like how it's turned out. And it's actually kind of set the tone for the space in, in a lot of ways. Uh, the way the guy achieved this look was with some kind of homemade vinegar-based stain I have no idea what's in it, it's some kind of secret formula, so unfortunately I can't share how to recreate this look. He just gave us um, a little bit extra here in case we needed to touch something up. So yeah, there you have it. We got these fancy pieces of fur for our end walls and we're just treating them with a clear stain. On this end wall, there's going to be kitchen cabinetry up to counter height, and on this end there will be a coat closet. So whatever cladding we put on the wall below that counter height is going to be completely hidden. So we only have a certain amount of the feature wall boards, uh, and it's pretty tight. Like we calculated how much we needed, and it's we don't have a lot of extra to work with. So rather than wasting some on an area that's going to be totally hidden. We've got just the most basic type of board, an OS, a sheet of OSB that matches very closely the thickness of our feature wall boards. I've cut it to shape that will accommodate going around the furnace here, and you'll see how that goes. And I've also taken the time to cover, um, well, the whole thing, but also the cuts that I made with some of the bargain bin um, paint primer stuff and uh, the stain that we got just so that it's a little bit resistant to moisture in case there's ever a spill back there or just moisture getting soaking into it, it's not gonna expand or it'll at least have some resistance to it expanding or rotting or whatever. So I'm gonna put this on, you can sort of see uh, what I'm getting at here. Alright, now we got some cladding down here, and from here up, we're just going to use our nice stuff. And when all the cabinets go in, we're going to have a nice surface to sort of back that against and fix into and everything. And there was no unnecessary wastage of our nice boards. We also made use of what was left of that sheet of OSB down here, just because uh, this is going to be underneath the corner couch. So same thing, we don't need to waste our nice boards down in a place that's going to be hidden. Now we're putting up our end wall pieces and we're using some of the crappier ones lower down because the countertop is going to come to about here. And as we work our way up, we're sort of being more selective as to which ones we choose to make a nice pattern. The installation for these wall boards is very similar to how we did the exterior siding in the sense that uh, we did uh, some measurements to figure out sort of a story pole, just roughly to make sure we weren't going to end up somewhere where we'd have like a tiny sliver to have to wedge in there. Um, then I've got a scrap piece that I put over whatever piece I'm working on to hammer it down so that I don't damage the tongue. Uh, and then I also use that piece to make marks. So before I put this piece down, for example, I put this piece on top of uh, the one that was already there, bring it right up to the box and then make a mark for the depth that I'm going to need to, you know, carve out of this piece. And then I would transfer that mark to this one. Then we hold this piece up in its horizontal position to get the sideways marks and then that's how we figure out exactly where that notch needs to be and that's working great and actually this is the only thing that's different about this from the exterior siding which is a lot better than the exterior siding in terms of uh, ease of work is because we're not actually having to butt hard against 
trim that was already there. In this case, the trim's going on after. We, have, we don't have to be nearly as precise. We just need to get within sort of a quarter inch as generally the gap that we're leaving. Uh, and then that roughness, like it doesn't need to be even from piece to piece or even perfectly with the, the, the uh, window sills or the boxes or anything, it's all gonna get covered. So it's, it's quite a bit easier in that sense. We're also doing angled cuts wherever pieces meet just to help uh, the seam look nice and tight. And then we're hand nailing in all of these little uh, brad nails through the tongues so that they're hidden when the subsequent groove goes over them. And we're doing it by hand instead of with the nail gun uh, just to have a bit more control and prevent splitting because some of the tongues are not um, that thick or very strong looking. We're up to the ceiling, which is sloped obviously, so we have to make these angled cuts to uh, make it work. But another challenge we're dealing with is that we're out of boards that are long enough to span the whole width uh, in a single board. And then whenever we're doing two boards in one row, we have the, an angled cut with a seam and we try to make it mate uh, nicely. So what I've got is I started with a little piece with that angle cut uh, and then took another board, made the uh, opposite angled cut and made sure that that was going to uh, mate nicely. Then once that was ready, this sort of end is done and I'm measuring from there to the other end to get these, uh, to get the measurements to make this angle. So what I did was just measure from the very corner along uh, what will be the bottom of this piece to here, the bottom of the mating piece. Uh, and then that would be sort of the length of the whole board but then along the top to get the measurement from here to here, I took a scrap piece, put it on the tongue of the, of the previous piece, and basically had it, uh, well, slid it along until it wedges up against the ceiling, then measured from that point where it's hitting along to the top of the little mating board. And so that would give me the distance from here, my existing angled cut along the top to a point along the board. And so I just made a mark at that point, made a mark you know, to the, the tip there, and then just drew a straight line between those two points. And that gave me that angled cut. And I erred on the side of leaving a little extra. And when I tested it, it was just a little bit too tight. And so I just had to shave a tiny bit off to make it fit but that way we're as tight as we can to here, um, which is gonna make it easy to cover whatever sort of gap or seam there is with trim as a final step so that everything looks uh, as nice as, as it can. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles, and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here. Good. Like, tell me what you're doing. Ugh. I said I didn't want to do video. Something or Is other. this like an okay shot? There's like garbage and shit. In this episode, we show how we installed our lovely feature walls. That's really creepy.